Now I come back a year later and it's double the size. You know, Asia is leading blockchain. Americans don't want to hear that because I think this is the first technology innovation in the last 200 years that America hasn't dominated. And it's really hard to watch, you know, a country I was born in just mess up one of the greatest innovations in history. So I had lunch with him here last year. He said, Brian, don't ever invest in anything where the founder isn't all in. And his digital asset ecosystem, almost all equities, conservative, but again, you know, 10 T holdings, $10 trillion crypto ecosystem that he now thinks is going to 30 trillion. So I listen to guys like that, macro guys, and um, I'm super bullish, but I'm careful. We all have to take profits. We can't get crazy. In the next 12 months, I think everybody needs to make intelligent decisions. You don't have digital assets that the government can't touch or print more of or tax or inflate. You don't really have real freedom. I'm all in on this. I can't go anywhere else. It feels right to be here. Brian Rose, founder of London Real and former Wall Street trader, drops a bombshell. He reveals the hidden forces driving Bitcoin's explosive growth and why digital ownership is now more crucial than ever for your personal freedom. But here's the twist. While the world watches, Asia is quietly leading the charge in blockchain innovation. Stay with us as Rose uncovers the truth behind crypto regulations, investment strategies, and why waiting to act could be your biggest mistake in this financial revolution. First time was last year, first time in Singapore. We were in the middle of a crypto winter, bear yeah. market. I checked the price of Bitcoin, it was around 26,000. Now it's 60 today. And I was blown away by how Asia decided not to participate in the crypto bear market that North America was in. And I was like, wow. And so here they're going full force. They're into gaming, they're into investing. And so I was blown away. This place was hopping last year. Now I come back a year later and it's double the size. You know, Asia is leading blockchain. Americans don't want to hear that because I think this is the first technology innovation in the last 200 years that America hasn't dominated. And I think it's really good to get over here and see how a big chunk of the world moves. And so I love coming here. It's a long flight from London, not as long as your flight, but we have a lot of investments now in Asia and a lot of gaming investments. And we have investments here in Singapore. So I love coming. I really love the vibe. Singapore is like crypto. It's an amazing success story built from nothing. And so I get a lot of good vibes. And then I've been told Thailand is now happening. You know, Malaysia is happening. What's going on in the Philippines. We invested in a company in Indonesia. So look, my Asia game isn't that strong, but I come here once a year just to make sure I know what's up. I think Korea, this last week or two, just agreed that all these uh, tokens are now securities and now mergers can happen and the government gets their blessing. And you know, Asia's moving forward. Hong Kong is, is moving forward in a big way. And so yeah, it's refreshing being here. Yeah, now we got rate cuts. That hasn't happened in four years. I'm super bullish that rate cuts are bullish for crypto, but I hear c contradicting voices on that too. Good ones, bad ones. Dan is one of the best. When SBF was happening in October 22, Dan was buying assets for his fund for pennies on the dollar. I don't know many people that were putting their money where their mouth is. And now he said, look, you know, look where rates were when Bitcoin was here. Look where the rates are going. He said, this is all bullish. I'm super bullish, but I'm careful. We all have to take profits. We can't get crazy in the next 12 months, I think everybody needs to make intelligent decisions. That's what I'm trying to tell all my people. Crypto is an instrument of freedom. And to quote Yatsu of Animoca Brands, if you don't have property ownership, you don't have freedom. And if you don't have digital property ownership, you don't have digital freedom. We all live in a digital world these days. So I was pulled into this somehow. Um, and now when I see it, I see my own freedom embodied in this whole market. And I always tell people, if you don't have digital assets that the government can't touch or print more of or tax or inflate, you don't really have real freedom. And I'm good friends with Tim Kennedy. He's a Green Beret. And um, I had a podcast with him one time and he was talking about his guns. And I paused and I said, now I know why you have guns, because the guns allow you to protect your property. Your property gives you freedom. And he said, exactly, Brian. And that's why we have to protect our digital assets. So I'm all in on this. I can't go anywhere else. It feels right to be here. You know, the whole idea of Bitcoin and Satoshi, you know, it was not about having our only one thing and nobody else can do this. You know, it's an instrument that anybody can use in whatever way they want to use it. Just like freedom of speech. As Elon said, freedom of speech is when someone you don't like says something you don't want to hear. I think the same is true with crypto assets. You know, someone you don't like creating a crypto asset that you don't respect. We have to let everybody do those things. And so if I see these things as imperative in building communities, it's better for capital markets. Like, why do I need the SEC to approve a public offering to raise capital. Why can't I raise capital on the blockchain? Like what an amazing way to do that and build community to do that. So I think everybody should allow to do that. Of course, I love Bitcoin and I respect it in a massive way. Brian Rose paints a picture of a rapidly evolving blockchain scene in Asia. 
with countries like Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, and the Philippines leading the charge in crypto innovation. But here's where it gets really interesting. He warns that Bitcoin is starting to move in sync with traditional assets, which could threaten its unique appeal. On top of that, Rose slams the SEC's chaotic approach to regulation, predicting that the 2024 US election could flip the script entirely on crypto laws, adding even more uncertainty to the market. Keep watching if you want to see how all these pieces could redefine the future of crypto. Yeah, I think that comes from the top at the SEC. As Elon said, the SEC is a mess of an operation. Some call it a racket, where the people in there try to do high profile prosecutions to get jobs at high profile law firms after they get out. And they only go after certain cases. I mean, they're a bit in an attention economy themselves. They're trying to get the biggest bang for the buck to try to scare the most people. It really is a mess, that whole organization. And it's not just crypto, but right now, like you said, crypto people get triggered, but the other people don't. And so to see what BlackRock is doing with real world assets, they're actually tokenizing treasuries. They actually have their own coin, that Biddle coin or yeah. whatever. I mean, that blows my mind. And I've, we've been talking to a few other RWA projects that are actually tokenizing securities. I, that blows my mind that that's actually happening. Obviously, BlackRock and Larry Fink, the chief marketing officer for Bitcoin, as Sailor jokes, which is amazing. This is super positive. So a lot of people talk about RWA and they're not doing RWA, but I'm bullish on that for the future. Look, blockchain-based AI, I'm a big fan of decentralized open source AI. I'm very concerned by the same companies that censor me, now censoring me with AI. Very concerned about that. So we do a bunch of those investments. I'm bullish on that. I want to know where my information comes from. Not that it's spit out from Google and it tells me the answer. So I'm worried about that. I'm bullish. We're huge fans of Animoca Brands. I have about eight investments with Yad. I've had him on the show eight times. I, he's a dream visionary. I, I honestly think he's the next Elon Musk, really. And so I'm bullish on gaming. My kids play games, but we need something to bring people into crypto and Obviously, the game has to be fun first. That's actually happening. So I guess these are the things I'm bullish on, but it's going to take time. They're greedy DGEN traders that maybe made a little too much money in those other bull cycles. I mean, I love them, but they just need to zoom out a little bit. I mean, I worked on Wall Street for many years. If you make a 15% return annually and stack those together, you're a god. Yeah, look, when ChatGPT came out, I went deep down the dark rabbit hole on all things AI. I was actually good friends with Dr. Ben Gertzel of Singularity Net, which is now the super... Yeah, super they they merged with yeah, Batch, Singularity, and Ocean. And yeah. Ocean. Yeah. I had him on my show five years ago, and we were just talking about AI. And it was really interesting. He came on the show. The next day, I forgot everything. And then all of a sudden, I saw ChatGPT. I got him back on the show, and I started going deep down the rabbit hole. I knew Mo got it. I don't think it can be stopped. Two years ago, maybe they could have done things, but now I just don't think it's stoppable. And even if Trump doesn't get elected and Kamala comes and Gary Gensler comes hardcore, like you said, Bitcoin could still go up. We're gonna keep moving forward. And no, I don't think it can be stopped now. As the conversation comes to a close, Brian Rose leaves no doubt about his optimistic view on Bitcoin and crypto. The stage is set for explosive growth and digital ownership could be the key to safeguarding personal freedom in a rapidly changing world. With Asia at the forefront of innovation and crypto regulations in flux, Rose urges viewers to stay ahead of the curve. Through his experience, he's not just offering a glimpse into the future of finance, he's giving investors the tools to capitalize on it. The chance to reshape both wealth and freedom through digital assets has never been more real. Now is the moment to act. Don't let this revolution pass you by.